All right, guys, so today we're swapping things up a little bit, and I brought, we're doing like kind of more of a podcast style video. I get so many requests to do videos like this. We'll see how this one goes. Hopefully the lighting and stuff works out. But I brought my friend Ryder, who is his own YouTuber slash knife maker, and uh, we're gonna be talking about knives in films and video games primarily, because we came up at about the same time in the knife community, like around the 2010s, early to, or probably like late 2000s, early 2010s. And of that time, I feel like a lot of people were heavily inspired in their knife journey by video games. And I think both of us were, and certainly we go our own routes of like different practicality things. Like I lean towards bushcraft styled and like survival knives, like the CRK Pacific, which in and of itself has been featured in video games and films. But um, ultimately that I think that kind of point of like video games and films has really, or I guess pop culture has influenced us a lot. So anyways, I will let my friend Ryder here introduce himself. How's it going guys? Um, you know, follow me on the YouTubes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I've been, been into knives for a long time, probably what, 13, 14 years at this point. <clears throat> um, and just recently got into making them. I'm not full time. So we've got some of those here today, just like some of my designs. And, um, I do draw a lot of inspiration from video games and other things in media and culture. So, um, it'll be a fun little discussion. Um, yeah, for sure. And if you do want to know more about Ryder, like I said, he has a YouTube channel and an Instagram. They'll be linked below or somewhere around here in this video. So definitely, if you want to know more about him and his work, you can check that out. Mostly yeah. active on Instagram, unfortunately, but moving over to the YouTubes because uh, I think it's a little, little more, uh, it's different. It's different. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's start off with some questions. And just to make sure that I don't mess up these questions, I have them on my phone. So that's where I'm going to be asking these questions from. But uh, definitely, like, I think there's been a heavy pervasiveness of, like, knives being featured in films, uh, especially, I guess, like, really all throughout the existence of films like I, I think immediately of like cowboy movies and stuff where like Bowie knives and stuff really rose to pre predominance but that's not really quite like our generation I mean I think cowboys and stuff is fun but like, it's cool but yeah so I guess like my first question was you know speaking about like now do you feel that culture influences knives or does not does knife life or does knife making really influence culture because i have some thoughts of my own but yeah so i think it goes both ways i mean um you know for for instance uh you know we were talking earlier about strider and their their features in uh, Call of Duty, um, and they have been in other things as well, I'm sure, but uh, most people are probably most familiar with their Black Ops appearances. Um, there's a karambit in one of the campaigns. Um, somebody today sent me a picture of a crash axe uh, or a, a tomahawk that was featured as like the main multiplayer tomahawk that you use. Um, and I think that like that culture probably influenced a lot of people's taste just coming up in that era but the reason that it got into that game in the first place is because of some sort of placement through um, a consultant right who was familiar with the brand and they were looking at stuff or maybe that's just what came up when they looked up you know tactical tomahawk and so i think that it is this kind of ebb and flow of back and forth you know like um, we were talking about Emile's Kukri, like, you know, when you're designing a knife for these characters and you want something unique that has a rich history, you're going to go online and you're going to start, you know, iterating, um, I think that Pacific uh, oh, Seal sure. Pup hybrid in the, in the <laughs> new Call of Duty is a perfect example because they took this exact handle and then they slowly, like, modified it and merged it with the Seal Pup. And so people get confused on which one is which, but... The seal pup has a rich history, and so does the Pacific, and they're sure. both, you know, uh, I mean, I don't think it's the SOG seal pup. It's the the seal pups that SOG used <laughs> like, well, that mean, were in more famous. In seriousness, too, the SOGs, like, as much as I dislike the modern SOG brand, um, legitimately, they were issued to actual seals. Um, and there's a few okay. other 
SF YouTubers that have like they've pulled them out of their collection. Like, yeah, I was issued this. It's a piece of garbage. So and you're so, gonna have to send me the links to that because, yeah. like, um, I I just uh, the you know the one that I always bring up is the the uh, what's his name Glover Glover yeah Tactical. Mike Glover Mike Glover yeah uh, his Strider he's got I forget what they're called but it's like a BN. And it's this fucking massive fixed blade. And he said right. the owner of Strider gave it to him. It's just a little, just a little call out in the middle of a video. And it's like, right. you know, what, where do you, I, I want, I want to right. be Strider. Like, <laughs> right. You ought to be given that. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, they were definitely standard issue. And once again, the Pacific was, um, I think the Pacific was requested by the SF different forces. It, not necessarily the SEALs per se, but um, I'd have to double check because I actually talked to Bill Harsey about it. Oh. And it's a group, uh, an SF group that's actually stationed over in Asia. Yeah. And so they requested um, or they put a request in by Chris Reeve to make a knife for them. And so that's how the Pacific was born, was Bill Harsey and Chris Reeve got together, made a knife off of a, re a requisition from that SF group. Bill it, Harsey is a very interesting individual. Dude, um, he is. is. Is he the owner of Spartan Blades? Or I don't think he's the owner. I think he's okay. just a designer. The owner of Spartan Blades has worked with him as well. Yeah. And there's some interesting stories behind some of those knives. <laughs> if you ever catch him at a show... Um, like the SOCP dagger is one oh, yeah. by Benchmade, which has a little bit of a controversial history, but um, pretty much every knife that Spartan Blades makes has some sort of story kind of like that. Right. Um, but I mean, Reeve has the uh, Green Beret and mm -hmm. they've got those survival knives. Yeah. Um, Strider has the SMF, which is, uh, right. I'm not going to try and remember the... Um, the acronym for it, but it, it's not like their usual name. The SMF theme. should be the Strider Military Folder, right? Yeah, I think it was. The SNG is named after yep. two yep. operatives, but. The uh, SMF is, um, I thought it was for the Marine Corps, but like, Might this is bad. the thing. I'm not a historian of that stuff. Like, I just right. have little tidbits of culture, and so I right. kind of just pull from everywhere i don't want to like say anything definitive and be For wrong because sure. there's one of y'all in the comments <laughs> who is like you it's need like, to do more research right, right, and right. you're right i do <laughs> invariably i don't know there's always a subject matter expert for everything and yeah, i yeah. think like when you go to make a video especially something this nonchalant like we're trying to cover a lot in one video as opposed to just very faceted things. One thing I was going to say, from my perspective, I guess, coming up in pop culture about like in both films and video games, I feel like in the beginning, um, like when I first started watching, um, you know, like films and start playing video games, there was a lot of fictionalization, especially with things like Halo, where they're like, oh man, this is a futuristic, so let's just make something cool that looks futuristic, right? But then we started to see things like more um, modern conflict inspired things like Call of Duty 4, especially where it's talking about present real times. And like, mm. oh, so we actually need to like, once again, like you said, like hire consultants because that's how things like the Pacific got into Modern Warfare 2 and the different features of the Emersons. Uh, is like they hired real, um, you know, military SF veterans as their consultants. And they're like, well, this is what I actually deployed with and or it's something similar to what they deployed with. And so, you know, and I, I back think, when I was working at the where we met uh, yeah. behind the knife counter, right. people would come in with issued Microtex and yeah. um, just all sorts of stuff. You know, you'd see you're just like you've no idea how many knife nerds out there are, are right. very jealous that you got this. Yes. Um, and we're not talking like infidels because there would be, you know, mechanics who'd get issued infidels just because. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking like the, the, the bougie stuff that uh, people like. Uh, right. But yeah, the, the um, so I, I put out a poll this morning um, on Instagram just to kind of get some feedback for this right. conversation. Um yeah, follow me on Instagram. It's Polar Knives Steel for the culture. You'll know it by the walrus head. Um, but somebody said there were Emerson Karambits in some of the Call of Duties. And I yeah. distinctly remember seeing a tiger-striped Karambit, which I think would be Strider. And he makes a pretty nasty-looking uh, Karambit as well. 
Um, and so they just crop up because knives are one of those things. It's not like guns where mm -hmm. it's going to be front and center. Like they have a name for it. And even if the name is different, like you can analyze it and stuff like that. Some of these things are only featured in cutscenes for like a minute or two. Or like a brief action where like your guy's knifing, but it's so yeah. ambiguous. Yeah. I mean, when I saw the, the, cause I'm, I haven't played the newer Call of Duties, um, very much or enough to like really see these. Like I just saw it on a little TikTok video and, and the guy had pulled it out and I was like, that's a Pacific. Right, and and right. so for me, it's very exciting. Like that's my favorite part of watching a movie is when somebody's mm -hmm. done their research yeah. and they pull out a nice knife. I mean, everyone's probably familiar with the John Wick series at this point and their, their yeah. extensive use of Microtech. Um, but you know, there's been, uh, I'm not gonna, what's the one in Walking Dead? There's, there's a bunch. Oh gosh, there's so many. It's fine. <laughs> like so uh, many I know one that is uh, Bussy, but... Oh, yeah, um, or Busey, or like however yeah. they want to pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, you got spider codes in there as For well. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but... I am happy to see, because I feel like knife culture influences, col like, or I guess knife like culture influences culture, pop culture, more now than it did in the past. And, uh, you know, I, I think, like, oftentimes I, I look back at, like, the Rambo series of movies back in the 80s, and obviously I wasn't around for that, but you look at those knives, there were, you know, like, a handful of custom Rambo knives, but it was like, oh, that's just the Rambo knife, and, uh, you know, kind of got diluted down to, like, low-quality knives that kids would think were really cool, um, but there wasn't really any knowledge of, like, oh, this is this maker made this custom knife for this film. And I think nowadays it's like, you know, when a person pulls out a knife, whether it's on film or on game, it's definitely like under a microscope a lot more. I think like even the Modern Warfare 2019 that had, gosh, I think it was the Benchmade Nimvirus. Uh, I'd have to, I'm kind of blanking on it, but if I remember correctly, the stock knife, because there were obviously different iterations of the knife in the game, but the stock I think was a Benchmade Nimvirus. There's uh there's that one. I think there's like an Osborne. Uh it's like a it reminds me of the Contego. Um, oh, that's what it was. That's the con it was the uh, fixed cool blade version they, of the Contego. Yeah, yeah. yeah it'd be cool it. if they had some that's other stuff. You were telling me that there's some cyber designs in uh some of Gosh, those games. Yeah. And, Battlefield twenty forty two. Yeah. Um yeah. there's the fixed blade version. I think they call it the Benchmade three seventy five. Because the two seventy five is this is actually the auto version of the Adamus. But they make this in many flavors. They make it in like a fixed <laughs> blade, an automatic, and a folder. And so the fixed blade version of 375 is in um, Battlefield 2042. Which is funny because it's a semi-futuristic game. Yeah. But here we are with a fixed blade from the 2000s or like early 2000s. I'd just love to see more involvement from like custom makers. Shane is super cool. So I don't know if he had a hand in, in the designing or like the consulting for that, that um, right. application. But like they really, you know... If you wanted to make the next Halo knife, you want to go talk to Tough Thumbs because he's got like this very unique, organic, futuristic style, and like that's where I think things need to go. Cause like, hey, like, you know, we can mock up something from like, you know, uh, a Pacific Seal Pup hybrid. Mm -hmm. That's great. We don't have to pay uh, royalties. Probably like a rock star thing. <laughs> you know right. what I'm talking about right. with the cars. Yeah. Um, and so, but I'd really like to see them like really invest some quality. Um, you know, I, I told you that it was coming. Uh, my bone to pick with Master Chief's knife. Uh, that is not, it's not it. There's so many better things <laughs> uh, out there. And I think that... Um, you know, just like hire one of these crazy knife makers that's doing some cool stuff and, and you'll get a much better um, organic, even just a fucking Tashi right. would be incredible for that, right? right. Like a Tashi sword, like mm -hmm. just, you know. And I think like even, even if it was still fantasy, it would still be more realistic because like if you go to a knife maker, sword maker, they know what works, right? Mm -hmm. Like some of the things from more of your fantasy games, like, uh, what is it? Gosh, Final Fantasy, uh, like in many of its iterations, you know, they have very like obscure blades that are obviously crazy. but And those have their place too. Like mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say uh, Final Fantasy weapons should all go out the door. Like, that is they what it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he said it, not me. <laughs> oh, 
I love it. I'm gonna get roasted and dragged oh, in the comments oh, for sure. making fun of Master Chief's knife. It's not a it's not a great design. The standard issue uh, that's just kind of a bar stock. I hope I hope that you'll edit in some pictures. Otherwise, I'm, I'm just making some point. pictures. Uh, <laughs> the standard issue, like Bowie, is at least like a manufactured thing mm -hmm. that looks like you know when you think about like U.S. military like K bar, right. right? But that makes a little bit more sense, and there's a ton of potential there. I just feel like you put all this effort into Spartan armor. It's got all this shit, yeah. and then you give them a piece of 1095. You know. Uh, Come yeah, on, right, like right. Let's, let's. I'm using us to better. stab like these crazy foreign alien creatures, like, and that's kind of I think the appeal of something like um, Emil's Kukri, where it's so overbuilt, it's so overtop. It looks like something that a Spartan would handle, yeah. And it looks like if you were to use that Kukri, like it could lob the head off of an elite, because I mean that's kind of at the core, though we never saw it used that way. Like that's the core what it was designed for. Like in a last ditch, your battle rifle's out of ammo, you don't have your pistol in reach, you pull out this kukri and just lop their head off, you know? Um, and, and that's kind of like what we want to see. Like that's the kind of blade that I think, especially would be fitting of a Spartan. Cause like Spartans are overbuilt, like yeah. super troopers. Like they're designed to be this like apex predator for the humans. Um, yeah, and I think uh, I think that Emil's Kukri is just. I would take a whole spinoff game on on Emil just right. just because there's so cool. so much good stuff there. <laughs> One of my favorite armor types, uh, and then like the backstory on the helmet, which is it's a little edgy. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but uh, I, I rock with it. Uh, Emil's a, a cool um, cool Spartan. I feel like Emil is the equivalent, both like in his style and like his look. Um, to like the ghost of Modern Warfare 2. Um, I feel like yeah. there's a lot of similarities where they, they were never meant to be like the number one A-list like character, but they were the number two. And like everyone remembers them because they were the best number two ever. And that's, that's kind of how I feel like Emil and Ghost. And once again, they just have to look really similar with both the skeleton like face mask slash helmet visor um, of both of them. What influenced you to collect and like make knives was it do you feel like like video games film like do you feel like pop culture really pushed you or was there like i guess like what was your stance like when was like the moment you knew you're like i really like knives yeah i actually got into knives in a bit of a roundabout way i had been doing metal work and mm -hmm. so i actually was seeking something that was um timeless I, I was doing like jewelry and stuff and i didn't wear any um, I probably told this story a hundred times because anybody will to listen. And now I have a captive audience. Uh, but <laughs> but I, I went out searching for something that was um, a little more tangible. And, and really what I found first were all these like crazy fixed blades. Uh, and not just like I say this story like jewelry to Gavco uh, and Tough Thumbs. But really it was like jewelry to metalwork, all sorts of crazy fantasy blades and stuff like that. Uh, this is this is my TWR model, right. um, which is fucking sick. Uh, <laughs> it is awesome. I, I finished that today. Like I, I came here late because I, I wanted to finish that knife. First time right. working with carbon fiber. Um, so follow me cool. on Instagram. No. <laughs> right. um, but uh, so I, I found these like all these YouTubers um, and, and I mean like, you know, at some point I think YouTube can be considered like pop culture, like it is series and stuff like that. Um, and this is before like um, before Forged in Fire or uh, what's that other one? Uh, we Create or whatever the guys who like recreate um, Assassin's Creed stuff. This is before all that and it was just super hobbyist on the internet. Um, this one guy did a did like a like a machete kukri hybrid thing. Oh yeah, that uh, like uh, and he had like put nail polish to make his own digicam on it. Yeah. And I remember like messaging him and being like, "Can I steal this technique?" And he's right. like, "Yeah, dude. Like, I don't care. Right. Uh, I never did. Maybe soon, but um, <laughs> you know, stuff like that." And uh, I I remember going to my metal instructor and being like, "Hey, like." I want to make this, right? And it was this big fantasy. It had like recurves and gut hooks all over it. And he looked at me like, no. 
Uh, and so I dialed it back and I, I ended up doing uh, some other stuff. But, you know, at that point I had found like Gavco and Tough Knives and from there I was pretty much hooked. And now whenever I see stuff in pop culture, it just, it, it furthers it for me because like I would love to one day, you know, influence some of that stuff. Like I'm talking about going to talk to designers, go, go talk to Strider or Cyber, um, go talk to, to, um, I can never say his name, but Tough Knives, um, because these guys have such cool designs and they would make a very authentic thing and they'd love to be included. Like, that's the thing that, it, that like, this is top tier. <laughs> right. Shout out to uh, Dirty Bird. This is uh, the Halo knife from earlier. Luke yes. is great over there. Fox Mod 3. Um, I feel like we got to, like, call out the knives when we pull them out because like if i'm watching and i've never seen these guys before i'm like well i guess you could comment down below comment down below if you want me to say the knives names because i'm gonna stop from here <laughs> that's fair and i mean i will say like uh you shout out your knives and mm -hmm. once again i've been trying to like kind of pull them out topically uh mm -hmm. like when we were talking about strider i pulled out the striders yeah um but yeah, that your conversation. Sorry, I, I may have looked like I was distracted. Yeah. I was actually looking up this. I literally had the same kind of thing come up with me at like the same time. Where I don't know if what you were referencing was like the Wolverine, um, but there was this no, dude. No, I that's think cool. It was, but I don't, I could not tell you his name for the life of me. It was just one of those like crazy. Yeah, it weird was just ones. like one of the random YouTubers, and so was this guy. So this is like Irvo responsible for you guys who are interested um <laughs> but he's like some random canadian guy doesn't make videos anymore um but he made damn so, shame i know Get back on the youtube right, right. <laughs> but um so like he originally got a spetsnaz machete and he was like i can make this thing cooler and so he makes this thing called the wolverine where it's this weird kind of hybrid of like the spetsnaz machete but with his own topical like changes to it and it was just the coolest thing and i was like i want to do this and i never got around to it because i i'm not much of a knife maker personally yeah. i like to collect knives um but making knives like is awesome but that's kind of something that really piqued my interest one of my early inspirations for knives but i will say like for me i definitely think there was a lot more pop culture influence especially like video games but yeah, so I definitely have a lot more video game I influence myself, but for sure pop culture. And then I think like getting into YouTube like we did, um, like, man, there was just a whole bunch of small time YouTubers at that time that were just like, man, I got this really cool thing, but I'm going to make my own. I'm like, oh yeah, that's so cool. So the next question that I have for him and like I said, I have my own thoughts on is what are knives that you think should get featured in games or movies? Like, are there knives, um, aside from your own, obviously, cause that would be like a dream for anyone. Um, but aside from that, like, are there any like really slept on knives that Heart would make? and steel, polar knives and steel, follow me on the YouTubes, <laughs> follow me on the Instagrams. Ah, I, I post it. on Reddit occasionally, jacked off. <laughs> they're that. gonna be like dude this guy markets <laughs> <laughs> um, getting him off of here so uh i think like i just like seeing authentic custom stuff we we talked about shane cyber i think mm -hmm. that there's not many more deserving people tashi um microtech has already been featured right. i think his kids heretic like there's <laughs> like he makes some god of war type shit if right, you really right. wanted some crazy stuff and it really does depend on the character that like my my gripe with with um master chief is like that knife just looks like your uh wish special that you got for 13 dollars, and that's what upsets me i know that like it probably didn't start that way. People mm -hmm. started making it, but In like, that's what it, it looks like to me. Yeah. If you do all four finger grooves, mm -hmm. like, unless it's a trench knife, get, no, yeah. <laughs> it's get not, it's not good. Yeah. Um, no so I think, you know, uh, Tough Thumbs, uh, RMJ, which is probably in some, to be honest. And if not, I'm sure it's he's well on his way. RMJ is yeah. like, I mean, and I think that's a lot of the case is like you see a lot of knives being heavily used by legitimate SF, and then you know they kind of get their way into films and or games. Yeah, I do think Half Face Blades would be another one that is a worthy contender, especially because I think they make some like very unique, albeit maybe some kind of almost like fanciful 
edges, like this extremist is a little bit on the extreme side of like being super usable, but would not be a half bad blade for like some video games, especially if you beefed it up and just made it like bigger. Um, that would be one that I think would be worth it. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think, but for sure a lot of the, the guys you've named. John Graham, rest in peace. Uh I think there's there's some real potential there, and they are doing some stuff still. Um, CRKT just released a bunch of, well, they released like two new models. I think that he's got some really unique designs that could um, translate very well to uh, some some you know real world. Just it, it's got that futuristic edge. Uh, right. I think I mentioned Tashi earlier. Mm -hmm. He's just got a crazy um, futuristic design. Who else? Like who? I mean, I think Gavco think. would be cool as well. Um, we haven't talked about him. I'm his uh, little... his Bigfoot machete, like that's a one to one replacement for Emil's Kukri. Right. I'm sure, it needs a coating, but that was I've watched that video on <laughs> an unhealthy amount of times. I used to fall asleep <laughs> to Gavco. Right, right. Like his voice still just soothes me into sleep. Gav, if you see this, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> all, the, all the restful nights. I really hope that somebody um, clips this and sends it to him. That would be like a dream come true. Hilarious. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm definitely a big Gavco fan myself. Mm -hmm. um, there will be definitely more to, fee more to follow on the channel about Gavco knives and stuff. Um, gosh, I feel like, to be honest, I know Emerson does actually get a, quite a bit of time, but I feel like, especially in video games, I wouldn't mind seeing, like, some Emersons, because I'm not actually sure if there's... I love seeing some, like, folders, right? Yeah. Because that's, like, you know, <laughs> and letting people choose. Let's mm -hmm. get some brand deals going. You guys know, go right, to HK right. and, and right, uh, right. Smith and & Wesson. Like, let's go to some of these knife makers, license their stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, let's do some let's do some brand deals. Call of Duty, right. don't do kitchen knife sets, bro. Right, right, right. Just <laughs> not it's not it <laughs> no for sure i don't I think, think i've ever seen a hinder in a game i was just about to say too and i feel like i know my subscribers are probably like man you talk about hinder all the time like you really love them and it kind of might sound like i'm a bit of a simp for hinder but like seriously i feel like a hinder when you pulled out get... the smf earlier you didn't have an smf i, I know I, SMF. I i looked i was there's a video up on my youtube channel go check it out that smf so cool but <laughs> the, the double gunner grip is pretty sick Dang, that thing is, and that thing is huge. It's a monster. Like, to give you guys some comparison, this is a three and a half inch XM18. So this is not a small XM18. And you put this up against this freaking Strider, and I mean, they're like the Strider's just a little bit bigger, but then you freaking like whip out this blade and like, holy crap, man. it's insane. Let's see if I can like genuinely do an honest side by side. But yeah, like you can see that there, there's a lot to this SMF. Like, dang. It is a big one. Strider's it. knives just tend to trend big. Like, um, believe it or not, this is not even close to the biggest knife he makes. Oh, yeah. There's like a, like an XL, like an XXL. There's a Yeti. There's the ARs, which are just bigger than this. Right. And ARs we're and still GBs. talking about like folding knives, just yeah, yeah. for those who don't know. These are like folding The Schlong, models. which a lot of people don't know about the Schlong. The Schlong is out there. Um, and then... Uh, I think that might be it. That might be all for that folding. Be, yeah, for, as far as like folders, but yeah, it is. It's crazy. But the SMF is, I think, for what it was intended to be, like a large military folder, especially of the time, like in the generation when it came about. Uh, that that was the go-to because I know like modern military folders are more like this guy here, and uh, the SMF is just just a bit bigger than this. So and even you this wanna, is. Do you want to size I mean, compare? I can certainly do that. But yeah, and like. You know, just actually, you know what? They're not too far off. Okay, maybe it was a little bit wrong, but you guys can see there. It's definitely a military folder. Like it's definitely designed to be big. And I think like when you're carrying on LBE, um, like you don't necessarily notice it as much. Like if this was in a plate carrier or if that was in a plate carrier, like you want something big. And I think the other big push for that is like, if you're wearing gloves, yep. tactical gear, like you want something that you can genuinely hold with gloves. Um, so yeah, uh, let's, anyway, okay, so the next one that I think is like a really good question is, what do you think the future for blade design and use is going to be? And once again, primarily relating to um, like pop culture, film, cameras, or not cameras, but films, videos, video games. This is the future right here. Well, I'm still hard to <laughs> you know, like... follow me on Instagram and <laughs> <Right>. YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like I... 
when I designed these, I was thinking about like Spartan armor and, and just like I wanted something that was um, different. And, and so you could call that a gimmick. I, I think it's fair. Um, but you know, having the the three different edges on here, um, I sharpen this back edge. This one isn't done, obviously, but you can attest that these guys are sharp. Yeah, no. For um, sure. And I think that like the future is hopefully just better, um, better quality coming out in the game. So not to say that they've all been bad, but like, you know, I think that there's room for improvement everywhere. I mean, I've redesigned, um, mm -hmm. I have a redesign. We'll see if it ever happens, but <laughs> Emile's Kukri, because I think that as much as I love it, um, it's a video game and there are no physics. There is no, um, you know, there's, there's things there. Oh, mm -hmm. stout. Stout yeah. would be an excellent one to feature Dude, in a video game. Totally cool. um, but like even just something that has a futuristic design. I mean, I already mm -hmm. said my stuff uh, is inspired by uh, Gavco, Tough Thumbs, mm -hmm. um, Stout, uh, you know, and all those influences are here. Uh, as much as I would love for my knife to be uh, featured in a video game, I don't think it will be. But mm -hmm. I hope that people, you know, take this battlefield approach to, um, to, you know knives and video games because there is so much variation and mm -hmm. like it really comes down to personal preference because the military is issuing like k-bars and i don't right. i haven't seen that many k-bars in games to be honest with you mm -hmm. and for good point good reason i'm not that excited by k-bars <laughs> but i saw emerson in in um terminal list and i i just like lost my mind like right. that's cool right um sure. you know and it, it there's there's potential there, and I mean, you know, obviously it's up to these studios to decide, but, mm -hmm. you know, Hinderer, let's get some custom makers if you need something that's out there. I mean, uh, the I think it was one of the Alien games, they came to Strider, and that's where the Horcat comes from. Okay. The, the you yeah, know what like I'm talking about. Wild. Shouts out to Kyle. Uh, <laughs> right, I'll have to like clip in. You're going to have to clip in the, the video such... of him in the Tigger costume. You know the one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that the future is just like more authenticity because that, mm -hmm. that for me at the end of the day that's what i want to see you can do right. it with the guns like why not with the knives right and i think like luckily as far as pop culture goes we are trending towards like you know showing more realistic stuff and i think that has a lot to do with now like production teams for like triple a games um and even films are you know genuinely hiring on like full-on people like mike glover for instance and you know they are able to consult about how to use firearms but also the types of you know tools that they were issued from once again firearms to plate carriers to knives and once again they'll sit there and be like oh yeah we were we were issued like this k bar but it was a piece of trash so we all ran you know cold steel srks or we ran you know pacifics or we ran uh, seal pops and so so, you know, uh, you definitely have like people with real world, real world experience coming in. I just think that it'd be really cool to see like, you know, how they do with like John Wick, where the actors are like trained on firearms. They consult like expert firearm people. It'd be cool to like sneak a knife maker in there. And I feel like a lot of people not to like undervalued custom knife makers, but I feel like a lot of them would be willing to consult for not that much like compensation like i don't know if it'd be money or whatnot and <laughs> there, i'm not trying to say they do it anthony marfione is just great, rolling in his grave right. out there. <laughs> like, yeah. um i mean i'm sure he'd be a little bit more expensive but you know like to, to have someone like a custom maker like gavco or even yourself you know consult like, you could add a lot of value and i don't feel it'd be like oh yeah no my price is ten thousand to consult for this or maybe it would be but you know and um, there there are people out there who I mean, a lot of knife makers come from the military. Um, mm -hmm. Luke over at Dirty Bird. Uh, this is not his design, but this is his knife. Um, and I have not met his business partner. But um, the the Fox Mod 3, like, Luke was in the military. And, mm -hmm. and he wasn't a combatives expert. But, like, there's got to be one or two out there. I mean, everyone uh, knows Tracker Dan mm -hmm. um, and Hinderer. You know, like, there's right. there's people who were in the military who would probably be really willing to lend an ear as far as, like, um, 
you know, not doing these elaborate takedowns and stuff, which I, I know is part of the fun. It makes sense in Halo, a little less sense in Call of Duty, although I haven't <laughs> seen all of them. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong about that. Right. Um, but, you know, to see what people are actually carrying and, um, you know, get some, some really good uh, design impact. Maybe design something for that game that somebody puts into production. Right. And that way the knife maker has, like, another claim to fame and... and there, there are ways to go about it, but I mean, obviously, sure. it takes people at these game studios like actually caring about right. uh, authenticity in in the game itself. And I'm not gonna lie, I think that would be pretty cool. Like if they worked with, like, say, Call of Duty, for instance, because I know, like, Call of Duty, um, in in regards to whether you like them or not, they they're not my favorite, but they at least with Modern Warfare 2019, they worked with uh, Lucas from T Rex Arms. Like all of the animation for reloads and stuff. The reason why <laughs> I feel so visceral and real is because they used his animations, like his body motions of reloading like dozens of different guns uh, from belt fed machine guns to like desert eagles and stuff were all captured not necessarily from him but his style and partly him and so like they could do that with knives and knife makers get like direct input and like say hey like just for instance gavco like we want to collaborate with a knife and like if you lend this design to us you can make the thing in real life and so like there's kind of that uh, symbiotic relationship where the maker puts his design in the game, but then also gets to make the knife for real. So those people like myself who go on to say play Modern Warfare or whatever, were like, oh man, that's the Gavco knife. And now I like I instantly have to buy, or even if it was like a Hinder or whatever, you know, an Emerson, like I would have to buy that knife now because it's a part of that game. And it's it has that like connection in multiple ways. And I feel like honestly, it's almost a kind of missed opportunity because I know personally myself, there are a few guns in my collection um, that I was like, I use them so much in video games that I'm like, well, now I want the real thing. And primarily that's like pistols, like the CZ P10C was one. And don't get me wrong, I like the P10C as like a real gun as well, but I played with it so much in video games, like a P10C in video games. I'm like, man, I want the real, I want the real steel version of this gun. So I went out and bought a CZ P10C partly not entirely due to video games and so it's like it'd be cool to see that with knives where it's like man i use this knife so much in x game you know and i want it in real life like i want the real steel version of it and it is a cool thing like you know i, I think a lot of people become kind of that's where you start right it might be that video game that kind of maybe you didn't realize it but it sparks your um it sparks your interest in that sort of hobby and then like 20 years from now those people are some of your most loyal um customers because they were you know buying your or they were they were buying limited edition skins for your um <laughs> for your stuff i will say csgo you can do better i right? know i know this isn't a call out video i should be a little less uh, nah, this came I after actually... master chief I was actually going to say that myself because <laughs> CSGO has propagated so many of what we would consider gas station knives like, uh, yeah. M-Tech. Uh, I yeah. can't say that. Uh, it's, uh, therefore, it, I mean, they're M-Tech up, knives. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what's the new one? Valorant. Valorant has done an interesting take on stuff. They, mm -hmm. they maintain a little bit more of a futuristic style. I think those knives are... Um, you know, they're still very CSGO inspired, but they're different. They've got a space edge tech. Um, I mean, literally. Bungie, hit me up. Uh, right, Destiny right. 3, uh, consulting. Uh, <laughs> who, 343. 343. Uh, Master Chief's knife, you know. Um, I just can't wait to see the, the string of, like, hey, me Colin. just editing, just, like, it's like just promoting. Yes, it's... It be heavily featured in there it's just like it's all cut out just like this no. part of the episode brought to you by raid shadow legends <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> i love that song <laughs> yeah i think i think ultimately those were like the primary questions i had for you and cool. i i like wanted you to be a part of this video because obviously like as a maker and you're definitely more like you go to more shows than I do. Um, you directly interface with makers a lot more than I do. And that's just kind of given your position. Not to say I couldn't go out and do it myself. 
but I think it's, it's really nice to have your perspective because like, once again, I largely have a consumer perspective where it's like, oh, I like that. Oh, I saw something similar to that, so now I want it. Or, you know, that kind of perspective is how largely influenced my tastes. And of course, to like coming from survival uh, with like very pragmatic um, knives that are very functional, mm -hmm. um, that has also been a large influence for me. Um, but like I said, you come from a little bit of a different background. Um, and so it's interesting to see like genuinely as enthusiasts of pop culture and of knives, like how they influence each other. And yeah, it'll definitely be cool. Hopefully we see more like, so like real, real life knives making it into blade or into games. Sorry. Um, and that is something that like really excites me. Um, whenever we see something like, especially like in a really prominent movie or really prominent video game especially i would say more so in video games because obviously you're not like really using the tool but like in a movie you watch john wick use like a micro tech ultra tech or combat true on but like in a video game you feel like you're the one actually using that blade, <laughs> um in whatever application whether it's slaying you know aliens or you know like other combat operatives um so it's, it's really cool to see that yeah and i think there's there's so much potential, um, and like, if you're if you're making a movie, show, video game, like, don't let the tools be something you skimp on because people notice that stuff, and yeah. that's what provides a real authenticity. I mean, even just down to like um, pants, like you know, people look at that stuff, <laughs> like they they care, and they you know, especially if they're involved in that sort of ecosystem. Uh, knife guys are no different and um, frankly like you're gonna create like there's a reason that John Wick is so successful and it's because they were authentic uh, in a lot of different aspects and they didn't really skimp on a, on a ton um, and I think like you know it, it makes me more interested in the new Call of Duty to see something like this uh, not to say that the Blade community is the only people that you should see but um, or the, the only people that matter or are going to make or break your game. But, you know, that's just one more community that you can really infiltrate. And your stuff will seem that more, much more real because it is. Like, it's stuff that exists. And, I mean, uh, it, it's it, it's low-hanging fruit to me, to be honest. But. Right. That pretty much summarizes everything. Do you got any other closing thoughts or... Uh... Uh, follow me on YouTube. Right, follow right. me. It starts pulling out. <laughs> put put it. Uh, I finished that this morning. Uh, yes. I was just grinding it out. Uh, it was. It was. Uh, it is really beautiful. Not piece. finished at all. It still doesn't have an edge or a sheath, but um, just the way very, I like it. Butter knife sharp. <laughs> yeah, butter knife sharp. Once it gets an edge, uh, three four three. Hit me up, Master right. Chief Knife. I got you. All right, I'll do it for free. <laughs> See, he's just giving away his surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me actually like get consulted and like right. i really shot myself in the foot it's right. video evidence <laughs> um but yeah thanks for having me um sure. I, I really like this discussion and i feel like this will not be the last time that we talk about um, sure. knives and influence and design i mean that's probably one of my favorite parts of making is designing and really just like trying to make something that is purpose-driven um even if that is just like, I want it to look cool, which is where we started with this and it kind of evolved into like, well, no, that's kind of like a pry bar. You're getting a, a, a sharp penetrative tip, but you can also, you know, put some force on that, that uh, mm -hmm. nose and it's not going to be as fragile as something like this. Um, and so that's kind of the, the, where I started with the TWR um, mm -hmm. and like, it's kind of become my thing uh, as of late and and i just think there's so much out there like you know people say there's only so many knife designs but people keep surprising me with what right. they can pull out and there's there's so many talented designers out there like we could go on all day but um i'd really like to see some uh some cool new stuff in games not just like i i was trying to like move away from like strider emerson because i've seen those before right like most of the tv shows are using emerson's now mm -hmm. you know striders in a lot of video games these guys have these contracts there's a bunch of new up-and-coming makers who um you know 
aren't going to get as many opportunities because the, the market's so saturated and then people are really familiar with um, the stuff that's already out there. So right. uh, let's get rid of the bad stuff. Let's uh, <laughs> move in some new guys. Like Tashi, I think, would be an excellent one just because of his... Um, He's world renowned and, and he's got a very futuristic style. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I don't go to that many shows, it's just the one. And, uh, <laughs> you know, interfacing with makers is just kind of like fangirling for 20 minutes and then you know, move along to the next table. And, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like uh, a One Direction concert, uh, you know. <laughs> it can uh, be, certainly. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, yeah, I don't think yeah. I have anything else. Awesome. Yeah, I think I've pretty much summarized most of what I wanted to say. And without any further ado, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out. Inclusion of like, we'll put this action. forward because I'm out. And then we'll get Rip Barker. Right, right. Show them authentic. Got the, the merch. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, it took me a long time to finally decide to. And everything I did to it, it's like I, I rounded that off, rounded that off, and flattened the spine up Why'd here. Why'd you round this off? Because it kept freaking stabbing me. It was too oh. sharp, and it kept catching it's for... and stabbing. I know, it's for fighting. It's <laughs> so you can, like, hit someone and snap. I know, I know. One of the guys that... Uh... So there's Tyler, who has that ATF. Mm-hmm. Do, do you know my models at all or like because i'll say I, that one and people are like what i don't i don't know of that one so the arctic tree frog is that double knuckle okay he likes to call it the lawless because he started saying that one day and he's in texas so to have like basically a double edge like knuckle duster mm -hmm. is now legal there i love that and <clears throat> and I mean, to be honest, I think it's legal here too. I just we have pretty chill laws. Don't start shit. <laughs> right, right. Um, but he, so he has the uh, ATF lawless, mm -hmm. um, which was not supposed to be that way. It was like I designed it for like one knuckle, and mm -hmm. then he was like, "What if it had like more than one nice. knuckle?" <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "All right." <laughs> uh, there's this guy uh, that I met at the gathering. Uh, who was like born into the Hell's Angels. Great. And he was like, I want something on your books. And I was like, okay, like, what do you want? And he was like, just giving me all these like crazy, like this size things. He's mm -hmm. like, what if, what, but, and so I was like, all right, let me, let me design it. So I actually designed two mm -hmm. and one is kind of like a, like a, um, Tonto with mm -hmm. like full knuckle. Mm -hmm. And then the other, I was like trying to play with designs and what spoke to me. And I took a seal pup, like an OG yeah. seal pup, and I so used that as the inspiration. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to get it done up yet. I might just do the Tonto, the uh, MTF. Okay. So the ATF is the Arctic Tree Frog, mm -hmm. which I just think is hilarious, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty hilarious. I like but it. I, I also have to, like, I might not call it that because... Uh, like, I feel like you're going to end up on a list if you're always tagging, you're like... You're going to be on the ATF. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> like, like, like it's a radar. bad thing. <laughs> um, and then I've got the MTF, which is the Matanuska Thunderfuck. And it is oh, okay. a... Um, it looks like a... Like a um, so I, I'm debating on if I want to do a Karambit or a Pakal, like, mm -hmm. for the small. So that'd be the, like, the uh, MTF M or whatever. Mm. Or... Um, like I'm not sure, and then the full size is like a comma scythe, mm -hmm. um, but I've got like a, attachment points for like a crash axe, Damn. and so it's like this like you know like think about a tomahawk, mm -hmm. right? And I could put an edge on there, right? Yeah. But then it's got like a comma on the back, and so it's like like way bigger spike than you would get, That's and then it's wild. got the sharpened like reverse edge <laughs> so like it's a matanuska thunderfuck like no matter how yeah. you slice it somebody's right right, right. Like, um, you, you could hurt a lot of people at the same time, <laughs> including the user with the yeah so that's the the one thing that i'm afraid of is because if you just like right if it were to snap and that thing comes back like that would be kind of sketchy so i might just make one as like an internal like thing mm -hmm. and then see where it goes from there because you know I, i'm not trying to 
like have somebody get injured just testing my shit. Did, um, <laughs> did you get all that on camera? Yeah. <laughs> It's all good. I do have to watch this battery. This battery is my least favorite, but the I have another battery right cool. charging back there. I feel like I'm slightly scared for you, but yeah. It'll it'll be fine. I mean, you you have nurse training, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. I can I can yeah. stop some, cool. I, some minor <laughs> boo boos. This is to... gonna be like really quality B roll. Like, oh, just sure. cut it up. So it's like I feel like if you say that enough, <laughs> you're gonna end up on a list. <laughs> like, right, right. It like, just cuts to the most like awkward thing. It's like what did they Matt mean? Matt Nuska Thunder. <laughs> Fuck! Just zoom in on the <laughs> face. <laughs> like, yeah. What, what's going hilarious. on? No, like, anyways, where were we? Like, we were talking about. Um, oh, no, go ahead. Oh no, I'm just. <laughs> you're just like waving <laughs> away. I can't um, wait to see all the little outtakes. I, I expect you to spend a lot of time on this. <laughs> Damn it! I'm going to school and work. You fucked. <laughs>